Good morning. This is Daily Hebrew Declarations with Daniel Jedediah Cook, and I'm reading the declaration for today, February the 26th, 2021. The three Hebrew letters we're honoring today are Nun, Nun Final, and Shin. Along with those three living letters, we're, we're also honoring the spirit of understanding, the spirit of the Lord, and the spirit of might. The declaration today reads this, Faithful, righteous son, standing confidently, finishing their purpose and identifying their position by relationship with Yahweh, a place of action and bringing forth of many sons. Now, there are two letters in, the, in today's declaration that always just speak so much to me. Well, three of them, really. All of them do. But here lately, especially with some of the world situations, these two, really all three of these letters, I keep, I keep flip-flopping back and forth with that, but uh, I want to honor two of the letters today, especially, and those are Nun and Nun Final. Shin has been a place where we've talked a lot about Shin here lately because we talked about the fire of Yahweh and the fire of his presence, the fire of his glory inside of us. And, 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 and this is still true. So we're building on the foundation of what we've talked about in the fire of Yahweh's glory burning inside of us. But the two letters that are speaking more today are Nun and Nun Final. Now, these two letters are really the same letter that, that has, it depends on where it's used in a Hebrew word as to which letter you may see. Nun is the, the one of the original 22 living letters. And it's one of the ones that we see that are in most of the Hebrew words. Now, during the time of Ezra, Nun Final was added to that. There were some additional letters, and there were five uh, additional Hebrew letters that had uh, a sophit or a final version that was added to them. And this is one of those. So Nun Final really talks about taking what the understanding of Nun is and then expanding it out to its greatest expanse. So the question is, what does Nun mean, right? So Nun literally means seed. It means fish, believe it or not. <laughs> but it also means son, king, heir, and priest. I know you may say, well, what does a fish have to do with any of this? Well, there is a beautiful expression about this, and I'll tell you guys about it later when we talk about how that fish fits in to being a son, a king, an heir, and a priest. And it's beautiful. So when I look at Nun Final then, it takes the, the place of, or it, it, it just, it takes the definition of, it takes the, the representation of, it takes the identity of, if you will, of the Nun, and then it completes it. It takes it to its, its fullest completion. So if Nun would say that I'm a king, an heir, and a priest, and a son, then Nun Final would say that I'm standing in the fullness of that, being son, king, heir, and priest. You see, when Yahweh first began to show me the living letters, he's only, and, and since then, he's only given me one definition of Nun Final, and that is the scripture, till we all come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. So you see, even this Nun Final talks about the place of unity till we all come. We're talking about the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. I saw Nun Final as a measuring rod. I can talk, I'm going to talk about that a little bit later because there's something else that Yahweh wanted me to talk about, but I've got to lay some basic understanding of these two letters first. So if you will, it's kind of like an upright man one who, has, who, has, who lives in humility and stands in this place of knowing who they are as sons. That's the reason why Michelle made this, uh, made this statement. Faithful, righteous sons stand in confidently, finishing their purpose and identifying their position by relationship with Yahweh. In other words, my, my, my position is not based on what the world thinks of me. It's not based on what, the, what others may think of me. It has to do with my relationship with Yahweh. Well, in that place of me and him, it's, it's funny. I've got, a, I've got a unique way of looking at it. But when I go into the secret place, there are two expressions of the secret place that I see. One expression is that time where it's just Yahweh and I. I call it the universe of two. And the reason I do is because in this place of, of the secret place, there is just him and I. 
Nothing else exists there. No demons, no devils, no nothing else exists in that place except Yahweh and I. It's a protected place. But Saul should die, Ethlo Nun. Yashav Basather Elion, but Saul should die, Ethlo Nun. That's the first part of, of the psalm where it says, He who sits in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so, when, as a matter of fact, you know, you might have said, well, well, no, wait a minute, that's not the way the scripture says that. It says, he who dwells. Well, the first word, yeshav, there in the Hebrew actually, actually refers to one who is being seated. And the only time that that word yeshav is ever used is when a king is being seated on a throne. So you get the connection here? So I like to, I like to, to speak that more in the original interpretation of it, in he who sits... He who realizes who he is as a son, king, heir, and priest, who, who knows that Yahweh has said, I have, I have sat you with me in together on my throne in these heavenly places. We're having, we're, there's an identity in that, and we're confident in that identity and who we are as sons. You see, all of this is coming together in a word that I want to talk about. And Moshe, probably one of the most humblest men in all of, of the history of Israel. You know, Yahweh himself called him a very humble man. The people of Israel call, and, the, and the Jews called him a, a very humble man. And one of the things that, that uh, Moshe was called was Levi Tanin. And Tanin actually contains both the Nun and the Nun final. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of the Hebrew living letters, Tanin is Tav, Nun, Yod, Nun final or Nun Sophit. And the reason I bring that up is because the Tanin there talks begins to talk about the place of identity and knowing who they are, standing confidently in the place of, of knowing our position and finishing that purpose that Yahweh has set us for. But now, not only that, but Tanin is also an action letter or an action word. It brings about the place of moving towards something and completing something. And the bringing forth of many sons. When Moshe led the people of Israel out of Egypt to take them to the, the valley of Sinai, or the Sinai as we call it, he led them in there for a purpose. Because Yahweh had told him at the burning bush, I want you to bring my people here to, to, so they can learn how to be connected with me. They can learn how to worship me. Right? And so there was the, the action of, of taking the people of, out of Israel and showing them, really, it's funny, if you really go down to it and you look at the scripture, one of the reasons that Yahweh said that I want to take them down there, and it's, it's found in Exodus 19, was Yahweh said, I really want them to overhear the relationship that you and I have. You see, Moshe was known as one who walked and talked with Yahweh and who, who talked to him as one friend talks to another. In other words, there were no riddles or mysteries or secrets between Yahweh and Moshe. There was very clear, specific speech. And they talked to one another like friends. As a matter of fact, there are several places in Scripture where many of the sages believe that, in a sense, Moshe argued with Yahweh. Not in the sense of arguing with him like telling Yahweh he's wrong. No, 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 no. It's not what I mean. I'm talking about like the burning bush experience. Believe it or not, would you believe that some of the sages believe this? And I do. I believe this as well. That the burning bush experience, instead of only taking a few moments, went over the period of about seven days. And during that time, Moshe, probably the, the biggest reason why it took the seven days was because Moshe was asking Yahweh, if you will, in, a, in, this, in this plea, I don't like to use the word argument here because it's got the negative aspect to it. But in this plea saying, let this be the last exile. Let this be the time where it's the completion of, of everything that you have promised and everything that you have shown me. You see, in Levi Tanin, Levi Tanin was one who stood up and, and was strong, one who believed and knew who he was in him. But you see, Yahweh is taking us to a place where we are no longer Levi Tanins. You see, the identity that he is bringing us to is the one of Zadok Tanins. You see, Zadok was one of the, of the uh, sons of, of Levi, 
But Zadok was one who instead looked at the face of the Father. Uh, Oracle Teresa Bowen here at Gates of Zion has a wonderful book that talks about the Zadok New World or the, the New Old Order. And it talks about the revelation of, of Zadok. And uh, if you don't have that book, I would suggest you hi- highly suggest that you get it. But in this place, Zadok is one who looks to the face of the Father and stands in that place of who we are as sons of Almighty Yahweh.